All right, let's try that again. I was trying to make a video about something I'm about to show you, but this little bitch of a tripod failed me. It dropped from my chair that I was using as a makeshift a tripod extension and I nearly wrecked my camera. So it's gonna have to die. Welcome back, this is Conneth, and today I'm filming a very spontaneous and unexpected video for you. Um, the opportunity was actually created when my mum started to throw out everything we had in the basement, including this relic of older PC setup times from my household. An Hewlett Packard DeskJet 6540 printer. That's right. So, I thought, what are we going to do with it? We're not going to use it, obviously, because we have a Hewlett Packard Photosmart B110A sitting right in the living room, office area. So we don't need another printer. That's why it was in the basement in the first place. So, are we gonna sell it? No! It's not even worth the effort putting it on eBay because you're either not gonna sell it or you're gonna sell it for one euro or for 20 euros or for 21 euros and 59 cents. But it's not worth it, right? No. We are going to take it apart, take it apart, and then hopefully make it into something special. Like, like what? What are you going to do with a printer? Well, you're not going to print things on paper, because that's lame. We're doing a 2016 kind of printing. That's right. We are 3D printing on a 2D printer. Let's get started. Well, in order to 3D print on a 2D printer, we're obviously going to need to do quite a lot of engineering. So, um, the first step is to take it apart. Got some magic right here, in the form of some red tools that are probably going to help us take this thing apart. But, That was easy enough. Hmm. <gasps> Did you see that? Maybe I'm not actually going to take it apart, but just leave it as it is right now on the desk and do this forever in perpetual motion. Alright, um, I think I'm not going to do that, but I am going to keep taking it apart. So, uh, well, let's take apart this. Uh, this is the jam paper tray thing that you take out. There's jam, paper jam in here, just pull things out. So, how do we remove the latch here? Things like a fortress. Pretty fortress of magic that you cannot take apart without a manual. 
Oh, okay. So I researched a bit online about the HP Desktop Six I Full Old Disassembly T Down Take Apart Whatever You Want. I didn't find a thing. The only thing I found that was close to what I wanted is a take apart guide for an HP Desktop 6840, not 6540, but 6840 on iFixit, which should be fine. Though the 6840 apparently has a LAN port, which this one doesn't have. This one has two USB ports. To begin, turn your printer around so that the back of the printer is facing you. All right. Next, you need to remove the re support structure. Using a screwdriver, unscrew each screw and set them to the side. Okay, but we are going to need a Torx screwdriver. Ta da! Got some more high tech screwdrivers with all the good things, including Torx. So, let's see what fits. Oh! Maybe. Oh, yes, there we go. It moved. Ha ha ha. Who would have guessed? The rear support structure is gone. Alright, that looks promising. Looks just like on a photo. Here's the little motor. Step 4 Remove the top lid portion of the printer. It's the shell that hides your printer's innards. Yes. Remove the printer shell by carefully lifting each corner of the shell until it pops off of the base of the printer. Be delicate. Don't pry or bend the shell. Okay. Let's try to be delicate with this thing that we're never going to need again. So I got a bit annoyed and started prying with the screwdriver, which did work, and ma I managed to lift up this corner of the printer uh, off the top. And uh, then I got even more annoyed, and I just ripped it off. And apparently, this little notch was preventing me from lifting the thing, and I could have probably accessed it easily from the bottom, but you know. Nobody told me that, so I can do that. So well, now I have to look for a way to disconnect the keypad. Okay, so what we're looking at at the back side here is a small connector that has all the cables for the keypad. So I'm going to try to lift this up. You know, just never pull on the cables, always pull on the connector. It's, yeah, it's kind of, it would have worked to push it through down there, but I wasn't patient there. Yeah, I was impatient. Let's look at the very cool closing mechanism here. So, you've got these uh, gears on the side that manage to stop it from closing too fast. You have a very satisfactory feeling here. And then you've got this little uh, plastic uh, lever that actually gets uh, pushed up by the lid. And that then apparently creates some kind of contact on the left side of the printer. We're looking at like an optical sensor here because if you look at the logic board there, you can see that got this little thing which is an optical switch. So it's a light capacitor and then it's open and it's closed and if like some plastic up and it's gonna you know connect the circuit again to a printer that the lid is closed. So um new day, new luck. We lift up these 
this little tab should be able to simply lift the entire bar out of this little uh, clamp mode here. Oh, okay, so it's clamped in a little bit, but if you pull just a bit, and with just a little bit more force, then it will come off easily. Okay, there we go, yeah, that's easy. Okay, don't need this. Maybe I can kind of peel it apart here. Yes, there we are. Okay, well, right at the back here where the cartridges were inserted, there's a bunch of little gold pins. So these are responsible for, well, recognizing if there's a cartridge and what type it is, if it's empty, if it's been hacked, if it's been refilled. Printer cartridge DRM, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, let's get these back down, I guess. And let's see what else we can get rid of. Or what else we want to get rid of, because I'm well entirely unsure of how we're going to proceed with making this thing into a 3D printer. Circuit board here. And uh, let's uh, remove it. First of all, I'm going to short out this capacitor because it might just be holding a charge. I doubt that. Yeah, no, no, nothing. Nothing in there. Not surprisingly, because this printer has been laying in the basement for a good, I'd say, five years. Oh, I don't think they are fastened at all. Maybe they're, yeah, they're just snug in there. Cool. And this one, if we take a closer look, you can see that this mess of cable splits up pretty evidently. So all cable is going away from here and going into the machine right there. I'm not sure what these three are for. That right here, in there, is another optically activated switch that is currently closed. That might activate if a sheet of paper passes through it, connects to this, to these three cables right there. So I guess we don't need it. There, keeping going. At the back here, you can see the motor here. Two of the wires, a green and a blue one, go to the plus and minus connections on this little. PCB at the motor. I'm gonna get rid of this piece of plastic here because it's in the way currently. Ha! I win. This is apparently some kind of gearbox. Um, there's an interesting contraption here. These three, no actually it's four wires connecting here go to another optical sensor. And what this one apparently does is it measures how much time less light line there or whatever. I guess it's um it's some kind of uh, light recognition device thing, you know. Anyway, um, <laughs> so there's a, uh, a motor right here where I'm putting my finger, touching it right now. These two wires go to it, and it's connected to this rubber band, which then turns this gear, which in turn rotates this one, and the big one, you know, goes to the front and rotates this guy, it pushes out the paper. Or maybe in the paper. No, out. And then um, you've got the big guy with the big axle here that you know feeds the paper in. What this top motor really does is it moves the printing head um, left and right. So let's actually try that out because um, I happen to have a DC power supply which I will connect to this motor and the other motors as well to see what they do. 
This is a model railway power supply and travel. So um, it obviously outputs DC. It was made in Eastern Germany, and I also happen to own a crappy DC uh, White Mueller Diggy Jack 3.2. Volt meter. So this one's gonna be very inaccurate at telling us how many volts are coming out of this. It's connected now, it's getting power, and let's test this guy. Okay, well, it's off now, it's in the center position, so it's turned on. Just under seven, under sixteen volts. Okay, nice. So that means we're not going to break these motors if we connect it to connect this power supply to them. Well, I found a two-wire cable. Okay, looking good. Conveniently, this power supply has screwing. Um, connectors so we can just screw in the loose cable ends like that. That'll be fine. There we go. It was spinning. Let's try the other way. Nope, that's the wrong way. This is apparently blocked by something because it's not moving. Feels like there's a blockage somewhere. We've got power on it but it's not moving. But I don't see why it would be locked. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so a little bit of time has passed. I've removed some parts from the top and the other side of plastic. Removed the front USB port, which gives me a nice little USB pinout. I have found a little notch that was preventing the motor from moving. Okay, now it's blocking again because it moved the wrong way. I actually found at least one additional little motor in the front. Which, um, oh, here we go. Which uh, kind of moves that notch that was blocking the thing. There we go. That's nice. Blocking the sled. Okay, apparently a little much for the oops, for the motor. There we go. Doesn't sound too well, but point is it moves. Guess we can fix the scraping later. Let's see what this thing is about. Maybe we need it, maybe not. I guess we don't. The squeaky noise is the plastic rubbing on the metal in the front here. Nothing to worry about. Okay, it's a little inky down there. Yay, I broke it. Can I break the other part too? But I can. It's out. <coughs> That's what counts. It's a really weird thing here. Kind of looks like it's collecting some ink down there, but at the same time, why would it be collecting it? ink down here? Intriguing. I guess this is for cleaning the printing hats. Yeah, that's what it must be for. Hmm. That looks quite intricate. We got this rubber foot right here that cleans the black cartridge. And this rubber foot now cleans the colored cartridge. Let's 
Yes. I'm an artist. Yeah, fun stamping action right there. Oh, get that in the bin right away. If I knew how to do that, I could do that. Let me figure it out. See how it's held in place. There's that part which we can probably remove and the other part which we probably don't want to remove. Got it. Hmm. Nice. Um Yeah, well, nothing much to say about that. Um, you know, kind of like rails at the side that go in this axle right here, which in turn is uh, powered by a small motor in there. So there's a third motor for the 3D printer. You know, XYZ, three motors should be good. That thing at the bottom is a sponge that is completely soaked Wow, look at that gun. I mean, it looks like ink that has solidified over time. That's, I mean, that would be amazing. <laughs> Don't get this on your white t shirt, kids. Interestingly enough, this front cover piece is bent. Oh, actually, maybe it's not supposed to be straight because the thing on the left is bent as well. Yep, we don't need it. I mean, I mean there's no motor in there. No, we don't need it at all. So, yeah, I'll take a look at that. I've got the paper guide out. That's cool. Tiny, tiny little micro saw blades. These things. Funky. I'm gonna have to put it back in, I think. Oh wait, no, we're gonna put this back on the top later. You know, so that this sled doesn't lay on the bottom, but just kind of slides along here. Nicely. There's a hole right here for the screwdriver. And I can now remove the screw for the tray. There are some tabs at the bottom here. Got it out. I can see that little screw that is still holding this in place. Well, actually, it's not a screw. Okay, well, that's good to know. It's not a screw, it is simply a pivot. You just have to pivot this thing out of it. Well, there's a hole there. So after a little bit of, you know, working and a lot of prying with the screwdrivers, I was able to get this soggy mess of a piece of plastic out. I'm going to wash my hands now and then I'm going to remove this motor from here, which is actually connected to this speed measuring light sensor once again. Then I'm going to put this a little bit back together and see what all the motors do for like the final wrap up of this video and in a future video I'm going to go over the steps that I needed to take to convert this thing from its after this video state into a working, well, hopefully into a working 3D printer. So. Meet you in a second. Feels good. Um, going 
to put this guide back in place. Got the PC on the side, both wires still connected. And we're gonna try to get the big guy going. It's nice that it stops automatically on the far left and on the far right as well. That's cool. Let's try the other ones here. All right, so I tracked down the two wires that connect to the paper feed motor, and I'm gonna put them right to these guys so we can see how if it moves. Certainly works. And for a final test, I'm going to actually grab this because I forgot to get rid of the motor on uh, the ink collector. I'm just going to hold it to the positive and negative terminals here. It's apparently not where it connects. Oh well. The power's off. That's why it's not moving. There we go. Beautiful. That's about it for this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed watching it uh, because I did enjoy making it. She kind of liked finding out about all the internals of this printer. And I'll be sure to uh, subscribe to this channel if you want to find out whether or not I can turn this thing into a 3D printer and I guess see you next time.